mitochondria and more of them, which gives them really a performance advantage. But for all of us every day, this is a source of greater energy and endurance simply by making better choices. Again, this is just a summary of some of the cellular optimization of plants. It reduces the fat in our muscles, which contributes to insulin resistance. It reduces IGF-1 levels, which in, um, can be uh, re related to a reduced risk of cancer. It normalizes leptin and adiponectin levels, uh, which balance um, hunger signals. Again, it reduces the inflammatory mTOR pathway and cancer risk. It inhibits microglia in the brain, which are related to neuroinflammation, which directly impacts the way we feel every day. It optimizes a pathway called NRF NRF2, which uh, protects against cancer, and it increases the production of nitric oxide. The beautiful colors of blueberries increase nitric, nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels, improving blood flow to every part of your body. Uh, this is a study from the uh, Journal of American College of Cardiology, which again shows us that um, biologic vascular age, looking again at the aging of tissues, um, can be directly tied to our lifestyle. On the left, we see the lifestyle choices and diseases that contribute to early um, uh, aging of the, the blood vessels. <clears throat> On the right, uh, with the green numbers, you see that, you know, avoiding alcohol, um, healthy uh, sleeping habits, high fruit, vegetable consumption, some nuts, seeds, legumes, um, all lead to improved biological age. Um, I just want to highlight in the study so that we know uh, science here, <clears throat> this study pointed out that moderate alcohol consumption was beneficial. However, all the, the studies um, uh, subsequent to this one, which was produced in 2020, uh, really highlight that there is no safe level of alcohol consumption. Uh, there is no benefit. It always leads to accelerated biologic aging. Now moving out, looking at cells that combine together to make um, biologic systems, like right? angiogenesis, that's the growth of blood vessels and the microbiome. <clears throat> so we are actually more uh, uh, we have more genetic uh, bio, um, DNA from bacteria than we do from our own human DNA. We are colonized by bacteria. We are a living ecosystem on our skin, in our mouths, to our, our gut. And that the composition, the communities of those bacteria dramatically impact our health. And that the lifestyle choices on those, um, uh, those communities of bacteria are profound. We see that inactivity or activity enhances the, uh, acti the composition of those cells. We see that C-sections and formula feeding change the microbiome of babies um, for more than a year. Uh, sleep versus sleep disruption changes the microbiome. Antibiotics, the leading source of antibiotic exposure is not doctors and not prescription pads, it's actually animal agriculture, and more than 80% of the antibiotics that are produced are produced for animal agriculture. The westernized dietary pattern dramatically changes the microbiome, uh, as does stress. And so modulating those lifestyle factors changes the health of the microbiome, which is responsible for 75% of the health of the immune system uh, and coordinates a number of activities throughout the body. This is just to show the impact of, um, of a plant-based diet versus an animal diet on the uh, development of insulin resistance. <clears throat> we can see in the first chart here that um, plant materials um, change the, the types of bacteria, which lead to the production of short-chain fatty acids and anabolic enzymes, and leading to improved insulin sensitivity. Um, the study also showed that people eating a high-fat, protein-rich diet changes the bacteria to these, um, these negative uh, types of bacterial populations, which leads to a change in the production of short-chain fatty acids, inflammation, leading to leaky gut and diffuse insulin resistance. Just going to close these real quick. So we also see that the polyphenols down-regulate the inflammatory net network as well. 
just as a reminder to say that butyrate, again, turns off NF-kappa beta. Um, NF-kappa beta is critical in this whole angiogenesis formation. Um, and so angiogenesis is essentially the growth of blood vessels throughout the body. On the left, we see this beautiful picture of blood vessels, which really looks like a tree. And as those little branches grow, it's kind of an arborization of the branches of the tree. Um, it's, it's mediated by a um, number of factors, including VEGF. When this angiogenesis is out of balance, it creates two problems, both excessive growth of blood vessels and insufficient growth of blood vessels. So on the one side with excessive, you can see the list of problems, including cancer, um, endometriosis, obesity. <clears throat> on the right side, we see the, um, the balance of the, the impact of uh, the imbalance of um, poor blood vessel growth with chronic wound healing, um, peripheral arterial disease, neuropathies, et cetera. And so <clears throat> it's not about trying to get more or less angiogenesis. It's actually trying to balance the system that leads to a healthy body and the avoidance of many of these diseases. This is actually a picture of blood vessel growth into a cancer cell on the left. And we can see that this cancer cell is actually attracting blood vessels to itself by increasing the local blood vessels to produce VEGF. So the blood vessels grow into the cancer cell. Now the cancer cell has all of this opportunity to receive nutrition and to grow more rapidly. And at the same time, you can imagine that the small piece of the cancer cell, the cancer flipped off, it would have an escape route up the blood vessels and be able to migrate to a different part of the body and start growing there, which is a metastasis. So this angiogenesis is one of the key steps in the development of aggressive cancers that, that would kill people. Largely, a cancer could be um, uh, non-threatening if it did not have this step of angiogenesis. So the question is, what then normalizes angiogenesis? How do we prevent the growth of those blood vessels in the cancer cells? How do we optimize the growth of blood vessels into damaged tissues? Again, the research shows that things like berries um, inhibit VEGF, again, that growing of blood vessels into cancer cells, and normalize the growth of blood vessels in the damaged tissue. They have the perfect modulatory balance of this anti-inflammatory, anti-angiogenic effect, while at the same time creating the opportunity for natural healing when the growth of blood vessels is necessary. <clears throat> So because angiogenesis is recognized as a key step in cancer um, progression, the Angiogenesis Foundation asked a very important question. They said, which foods uh, will help to normalize angiogenesis? And so they did the research and they came up with this list from the Angiogenesis Foundation, that it's essentially all the, the greens, dark colored fruits and berries, uh, beautiful spices, onions and garlic and herbs, green tea and ginseng, mushrooms that normalize the angiogenesis process. Again, highlighting the incredible potential of a beautiful whole food plant-based plate to uh, begin impacting these, uh, this area of, uh, of angiogenesis. Now kind of stepping out and looking at the body more of a, as a system, looking at organ systems and some of the randomized control trials that show that when we change what's on our plate, we actually begin uh, reversing disease. Um, we can assume that's true because we've just looked at all the different systems in the body that are impacted by those healthy choices. But what did the randomized control trials say? Here's just a summary of those randomized control trials. We see that um, there's a greater sustained weight loss in whole food plant-based groups at one and two years than any other study. There's improved beta cell function and insulin sensitivity. Beta cells are the little cells inside of our pancreas that produce insulin. And the research shows that they not only improve their function, but they can be regenerated if they're not completely injured. Our improved cholesterol and lipid levels, reduced depression and anxiety, improved per peripheral neuropathy. Now this is really important because peripheral neuropathy is a very painful condition 
um, where the little nerves, especially in the legs and feet, um, become injured or damaged because the blood supply has been impacted. It's a very painful condition. Medicine does not have a good solution. I used to uh, treat this regularly in my um, previous practice. And because there's no great solution, we use medications to try and manage the pain, but the medications cause weight gain, uh, fatigue, tiredness, and some depression. So you, <laughs> sometimes you get more problems than you started with. <laughs> Excuse me, but the good news is when they look at studies uh, with people uh, that are dealing with peripheral neuropathy, they find that uh, an aggressive intervention with whole food plant-based nutrition in just um, a one to two weeks can dramatically reduce their pain, even in moderate to severe peripheral neuropathy, because it's it's improving blood vessel health, it's restoring blood uh, supply, it's reducing inflammation. And if there's not uh, too much nerve damage, the nerves can actually begin to regrow. So it's really good news for people that are struggling with a, a very difficult and painful condition that medicine does not have a solution for today.